And the coronavirus is taking a toll on the auto industry in China as sales fell by 92% in the first half of February. Now, according to the China Passenger Car Association, many car dealerships in the nation have been closed while much of the population stays home, as Christy just mentioned, to prevent the spread of the virus. Now, China is the world's biggest car market, selling more than 21 million vehicles in 2019 alone. Dealerships have restarted opening their doors this month, and the trade organization hopes for increased sales throughout the rest of February. As car sales have struggled, so too has the production of vehicles in China due to the virus. And for more on that, we're going to bring in Lauren Fix, the car coach, and she's going to break this down and other news or uh, auto related headlines today. Thank you so much for joining us, Lauren. Now, uh, China has already witnessed the decline in vehicle sales due to a slight economic slowdown in the country, as well as the trade war with the U.S. So how concerned should we be about this 92 percent slump in what is essentially two weeks of February? Well, that, that's huge because they're actually down 54% uh, in sales so far for the whole year. So that impact is going to affect the economy of not just auto manufacturers, but the economy of China. And they're already down in sales. Uh, at least it was predicted to be 2%. But having this happen, the timing was not good. And it's going to definitely impact automotive suppliers as well as automotive manufacturers. Now, Chinese automaker Geely has launched a service to allow customers to buy vehicles online in an attempt to boost sales and have them delivered to their homes. So as buyers continue to refuse to go to showrooms due to the coronavirus, we've also seen Tesla, BMW and Mercedes heavily promoting vehicles online as well during this health crisis. So do you see online sales boosting the Chinese market? And frankly, do you see this becoming more and more the norm of the auto industry? Well, I think this might be the cause or the trigger that makes automotive online buying more popular. I mean, obviously, those people that are home and who are quarantined are not going to be able to go out and test drive cars. They're not going to be able to purchase cars, and they're not making money in order to buy those cars. So that's part of the problem. But having online buying is really smart. I know Mercedes-Benz and BMW and Tesla's been doing it for a long time. But now that Geely is doing that with Volvo, this is a great way to get people to do something while they're sitting at home. What are they doing? They're online. And this would give them a chance to think about when I get back to work, I can purchase this car, they'll bring the car to me, I can drive it. And it takes you away from that dealer experience, but we're starting to see that here in the U.S. as well. And, and I mean, not to get too much off of this, because we're going to get back to the, the virus impact mm -hmm. on the auto industry, but w you say that we're seeing a little bit more of this in, in the U.S. I mean, you know, I think it took people a long time to understand that w when you purchase anything, you don't have to see it, you don't have to feel it. Uh, are we going to move that way in vehicles as well? Well, the big thing I always recommend to people is you must test drive a vehicle before you buy it. I mean, you're going to live with it more than, it's not going to be a month. It's not like a pair of shoes where if you don't like it, you can return them. This is going to be something you're going to keep for three years or longer. And in China, their culture is to keep it for the long term. So I always tell people you should test drive a vehicle. I know that Varum and Car Gurus and there's a whole bunch of other ones that are out there are bringing cars to consumers and consumers are getting this experience and taking it away from the dealer. However, if you need a repair, you have to start creating a relationship relationship with your local dealer, I always recommend to, to go in the dealer, at least meet the people at some point during the process. All right. Sorry for that aside there. Let's 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 go back. That's to okay. This now. You got to know. <laughs> Knowledge is power. Yes. Uh, Germany's uh, Daimler is also sharing concerns over the coronavirus impact, uh, uh, saying it could yeah. not only hurt sales, but also production and the overall supply chain. Now, how concerned are right. these automakers uh, overall about this affecting their business? I mean, we're seeing it for basically all at auto manufacturers right now because China is so important in the supply chain. Right. There's not much of an impact on Honda and Toyota, but most manufacturers are seeing some sort of impact, whether it be an, a screen or an interface or wiring harness or something that's made in China. No one's not getting impacted by this in any way, shape, or form. Sometimes you can find it in a backup supplier. I know that in for BMW, they're putting $2 billion into a battery factory because they don't want to be reliant on China. And you're starting to see that pull away. So this could impact China down the road, especially when they're looking at their overall economy, when people are saying, we're going to look at other supplies suppliers, whether it comes from India or Thailand or wherever that might be. So I think you're going to start seeing more of that, looking for that backup supplier. In case this ever happens, again, you have to protect your brand because you can't build a car with 99 percent of the parts. Mm -hmm. Now, Japan's Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry announced Thursday that it has established a new task force to address the virus's impact on the auto industry. So how bad are Japanese automakers being hit by all of this and what can we expect from the task force? 
Well, the name of the group is the New Coronavirus Countermeasures Automobile Council, which is a tongue twister. But uh, what they're trying to do is make sure that all the manufacturers that are producing products in Japan are at least aware of coming other suppliers that might be able to fulfill that need. I know that right now Toyota and Honda are not being impacted, but it may not impact them today. It may start impacting these people down the road because if they haven't been working for a long time and you've got a six or eight week lead time, you won't see that till six or eight weeks down the road once they get back to work. So they have to come and start looking for other suppliers, whether it be from Mexico or other countries. All right, Alan, Lauren, I had one more for you today. I, I gave you a, a okay. bevy of stories, but this one is the red meat okay. Lauren Fix story. We want to go back to China okay. for just a moment. Bloomberg is reporting that Beijing is looking to possibly extend subsidi subsidies uh, for purchases of EVs beyond 2020 after China had its first annual decline in new energy vehicles mm -hmm. last year. Uh, what do you see going on here? Well, right now they're saying 54 percent decline in sales, which is quite dramatic. And that was certainly not the goal when they wanted to go all electric. And, I, and part of their, their, their being green, they thought this was a, a wise idea, but people are not buying it without the incentive, which is equivalent to about $8,700, and it was supposed to go for four years. Well, the big decline says to them, we're going to have to go and go back to that incentive. Now, with the virus in place and people not working, by the time everyone gets back to work and start, starts making money, they may or may not consider an electric vehicle. I know that Tesla does rely on that EV help, mm -hmm. but we may not see exactly what their goal is. I know that China tends to be very aggressive when they make decisions, but they're not realizing they don't have the power for the grid and they're building nuclear power plants as quickly as they can. So sometimes they put the cart before the horse. The always insightful Lauren Fix, the car coach. Thank you. Thank you.